Hey everybody, this is Greg Johnson again with Fit Golf Performance Center in Sacramento. And today I want to go over a golf specific workout, including uh, little to no equipment. So there's a couple things you could use here. Like obviously if you have a set of dumbbells or a dumbbell, um, or even a single kettlebell, med ball, anything that you can use as an individual weight. Now obviously there's a lot of things that you can do with just your body weight, but having a simple weight, or if you don't have something like this, something like a backpack, uh, a backpack, a bag, anything with a handle. I've even had people use suitcases. So what I want to do is we're going to go through an entire workout and just using a minimal equipment. So for the purpose of today, I think I'm just going to stick with the dumbbell. But you'll notice as we go back and forth, you can use other implements for this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through just a traditional warm-up. And basic warm-up, we're going to warm up all the body. We want everything kind of warmed up, turned on, all the joints. And then we'll go through some core exercise, some power exercises, and then we'll end with some strength and a little bit of stretching. So here's what I like to do for a general gym warm-up is we're just going to start very basic. We're just going to keep the chest up, kick that toe out, reach out all the way up. Now this entire workout is going to be basically monkey see, monkey do. So you can grab a weight and follow along if you want, or feel free to just kind of watch and then pace out your own workout as you go. After about five or ten of these on each side, all right, we're going to switch into what's called lunge with reach backs. So when you step back, I'm going to scoop the hips underneath me, reach away from my back leg. All right, step back, scoop the hips, and reach away from the back leg. Step, scoop. And reach now I'm not rotating on this one which I actually will be in a second but I'm keeping my body facing forward I'm really getting that stretch in the hip flexor reaching back and away alternating sides step scoop and reach step scoop and reach same thing do about five to seven on each side depending on how cold it is where you are all right, all right and then we're gonna do the same thing but now we're gonna go into a step same scoop and I'm going to have you rotate over the front leg. Step, scoop, and rotate. So we just reach over the front leg, and now we're going to rotate over the front leg. Step back, scoop the hips, rotate over the front leg. And I'm really keeping that, that front knee straight. I'm not letting it twist. Right? As I rotate, I'm getting as much hip-shoulder separation as possible, really working on that backswing position on both sides, stabilizing the pelvis, rotating the upper body as much as I can. Through a few more on each side of these. If you feel like you're losing your balance, all right, instead of being on a uh, basically a balance beam, widen up your stance a little bit so you can get a wider base of support and get that rotation in. All right. So now increase the tempo a little bit. And we're going to go into lateral lunges. So I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to lunge out to the side, which means my moving leg is actually going to be the bending leg. So I'm going to get the stretch on the inside leg. And I'm always going to come back to center, alternate sides. If you notice. My lunging position, straight ahead, all right? My inside position, straight up, so you get more adductor. Feel free to use your hands on the knees for support. This should not bother the knees. I want all the stretch in that inside leg. Go for a few more seconds. And I'm gonna do my best as we go through this to work out and talk at the same time. I am wearing my heart rate monitor so I can get an idea of roughly where I'm at. And it looks like I'm actually starting to get warmed up here a little bit. And then after the last couple lunges, we're going to go into just some old school jumping jacks. Basically just comfortable jumping jacks. We'll do about 10 to 15 of these. Again, if you have bad knees or if anything's uncomfortable, you can either alternate jacks or step up and do jacks. We're going to get a couple more in. And then from jumping jacks, we're going to switch to seal jacks which is very similar, different arm movement, working on the back and the chest. And then after a couple more of these, we're going to go into what I like to call open gates. Open gate is basically, if this is a closed gate, that's an open gate. So open the gate, close the gate. And again, what we're really trying to do here is work on that hip mobility, just get things moving. We're going to be doing some squat type exercises. So if you need to, sit in that bottom position, Really work back and forth, feel the hips open up. So I like to do this warm up, whether it's before a workout or even on the course. Everything we've done so far is standing, so you can do this on a tee box. Now we're gonna start getting into a little bit more of the advanced warm up, including the upper body. What I'm gonna have you do is start like you're doing a toe touch. If you can't do a toe touch, 
You need to do this one more often. Reach down towards the toes. You're going to walk yourself out into a push-up position, and then walk yourself back. Stand all the way up. Down to the toes. Out to a push-up. All the way back. If you have bad shoulders, you may not want to do this one. If your shoulders are comfortable, you could try to go past the push-up position. You'll feel that core kick in a little bit more. And on the last two, I'm going to walk out, keep my hands there, tiptoe all the way in. All right, take a step backwards, walk down, walk out, and then tiptoe those hands all the way in. All right, and then a couple more on the ground. Great rotation stretch. I'm going to start in a push-up position again. I'm going to take my left leg and bring it all the way up and replace my left hand. My left arm is going to come to the sky. So this is different than the typical yoga stretch where I'm reaching with the opposite. All right. I want left leg up, left arm rotated. Leg is tight, back leg is tight. All the rotation comes from the upper body. Step back, right leg up, right arm rotated up to the sky. Glutes are tight, leg is tight. So I feel it in my calf, in my hip flexor, in my hip, my hamstring and thoracic spine. Big step up. I'm just gonna alternate a few here. And after this, we're gonna go into some core strength, some glute work. All right, so that's pretty much the full warm up. You probably can't see my heart rate monitor, but I'm at about 75% of my max heart rate. All right, so like I said, the purpose of the warm up is to get the blood flowing, get the body moving, and we're going to be doing a full body workout, so I want the full body to be warmed up. So the first thing we're going to do getting into the warm-up after the warm-up is core strength, all right? So let's start with just a basic cut and dry plank, all right? So now, I'm a nitpicker when it comes to planks, all right? If I'm holding a plank, I shouldn't see an arch in the back. I shouldn't see a big hips up or around, all right? Perfect plank, elbows under the shoulders. Pull your toes up under the heels. My abs are going to be tight, and I'm going to squeeze my core, my glutes, and my lats to hold myself up into a position. And for about 20 seconds, we're just going to hold the basic plank. And you can hold this if you need to. If you're uncomfortable, you can start with the knees. Got about 10 seconds left. And go ahead and take a break. So that's one plank. Now. I'm going to start giving you some variations of other planks, but if you ever need to, always go back to your foundational plank. Work on bracing your abdominals, work on keeping a straight spine. All right? So since we have eight weights, and again, that could be a dumbbell, it could be a kettlebell, it could be a ball, all right, what I'm going to have you do is we're going to start with basically a push-up position plank. All right? I'll bring this over here so you can see it. And then what I'm going to do is depending on what you have for an implement, I'm going to have you reach underneath and bring it over to the other side. All right, now, if you notice, my spine is still straight. So when I reach under, I shouldn't see too much wavering in my hips. This is still a core exercise. But moving something back and forth gets obliques a little bit more. So we're going to go over about 30 seconds. All right, and as we're going, set, go. I'll show you some different variations of this. Level hips, level shoulders. I can roll it back and forth. If I have a ball, I can push it back and forth. All right, if I want to make it more challenging, I'll flip it this way, and I'll drag it back and forth. Let me move the mat so you can see that one. All right. Okay, so if I want to drag, I'm going to pull and just drag across the floor. Drag across the floor. You feel all those obliques kick in. All right, stick with the regular plank here. Got about 10 seconds left, maybe five seconds. Back and forth. You can move this around however you need to. Forward, backwards, you get bored, you can move this around to different parts of the body. There's a lot of different things you can do here. All right, take a break. All right? So now, that's more upper body movement. You could also simply just do a plank with a shoulder tap that you've probably seen before. So now I want to go into some lower body movements. All right, we'll do two different core exercises with lower body movements. So the first one, same thing, we're going to hold the plank again. Abs are tight, shoulders are down. All right, watch me for the first five seconds and then join in for 
Hold the plank. Knee to elbow. Knee to elbow. All right, when you're ready, all the way up. Set, go. Again, if you notice my hips aren't shifting or twisting, right? I'm trying to keep as flat back as I can. If you're gonna cheat, I'd rather have you cheat high than let your hips sag. You should feel this in the lower abdominals, the core, the lats, not the low back. If you feel in the low back, flex your abdominals more. Got about eight seconds left. Three, two, one, take a break. And I'll turn kind of angular on this one so you can see what I'm doing. Next set's gonna be same thing. I'm gonna have you in arm position, but instead of the feet, the legs going out wide, they're gonna come underneath you like a rotation. So now I am gonna allow my hips to twist a little bit. All right, so I'll be in the same position. I'm gonna take my outside leg, my left leg, and bring it underneath to my right elbow. All right, almost like a mountain climber, but we're not gonna go quite that fast. I want slow. Get your knee as high as you can and add that little squeeze of the abdominals to finish off that position. 30 seconds. Ready? Go. Reach. Add a crunch. Reach. Add a crunch. I still want to abs tight. Shoulders down, belly in. If I were to put a cup of coffee on the top of your shoulder blades, you wouldn't spill it. Now obviously we're shooting for a 30 second holds here, got about five seconds left. But if you want to, you can make these one minute. You can make these two minutes. But it's a moving plank. Go ahead and take a break. All right, let's go into the glutes. All right, a couple of my favorite glute exercises with little to no equipment. All right, I'm gonna show you the first few. All right, first one basically is what's called a clamshell exercise. Now there's a key to this. Most people allow their pelvis to open all the way I want the pelvis to stay stable, toes pulled up. All right, so if you're looking for a starting position, if this is me on my back, I'm just rolling straight to the side. So that's the angle of my hips and knees. Feet flat, straight onto the side, spine in a neutral position, so support your head. Keep that top pelvis stacked over the bottom, and for about 20 seconds, we're just gonna rotate up. So this is basically called the clamshell. Kind of the old school Jane Fonda dirty dog type exercises. Great for glute medius. I assure you most people who don't do these need them. All right, I know it seems like such a silly exercise, but it's extremely important to prevent sway and slide in the golf swing, to really create power in the golf swing. And right at 20 seconds, watch me immediately for the transition. All right, I'm gonna keep the knees together and now I'm gonna rotate the heel up. So basically a reverse clamshell. And you may find that you may not be able to go quite as far. Same thing, we'll do about 20 seconds on each side. After we do the last couple of glute exercises, we're gonna start ramping up the heart rate, get some cardio in, get some power in, get some strength in. And go ahead and take a break. Now you can just roll onto your other side. For the purpose of facing the camera, I'm just gonna switch sides. All right, you should feel that right in the top of your hip over here. Same thing, brace abdominals, shoulders back and rotate, 20 seconds. Again, I'm not allowing my pelvis to open. I know with me personally, this is a more restricted hip. I may not have quite as, as good a range of motion, but I'm not letting my pelvis or my low back incorporate the range of motion. This is just a hip exercise. And go ahead and switch knees together, heels up. And again, there's plenty of things that you can do to work on that hip integrity, working on range of motion. There's other exercises that we can add to these. But for right now, we're just gonna kind of create this a full body. About five more seconds. Three, two, one. And last thing, straight on your back, basic bridges. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit harder. If you need a basic bridge, both legs on the ground, abs tight, squeeze your glutes, bridge up. Tight glutes at the top, don't just arch your back. All right, to make this a little bit more advanced, you can either go leg up, leg out, or straight leg to the sky. We're gonna go for the same thing, about 25 seconds, 30 seconds on each side. Ready? Drive through the hips, try to get your heel to the ceiling, not the toe, but the heel. Hold for just a second or two and come back down. Keep the timer here. 
try to get that little extra stretch in the hamstring. If this is uncomfortable, you can actually cross the leg over. You might be able to get a little bit more motion in your hips. Otherwise, if you have tight hamstrings, it actually is good to get that little stretch there as well. May not be able to go as high. 10 seconds left. And what you notice is as we're doing this core, right, heart rate could come down a little bit. That's fine. I assure you it's going to get back up here shortly. And take a break. We'll go ahead and switch sides, and we'll go right into it. Set. Go. And again, you may find that one side's harder than the other. If you find yourself cramping in the hamstring, push your feet out into the front of your shoes. If you're still cramping in the hamstring, just keep both legs on the ground and work on basic bridges. About 15 seconds left. Really squeeze that glute. Hold for anywhere from a second to three seconds, completely up to you. We're trying to keep that leg straight. Like I said, I, I know I have my weaknesses. One side is a little more challenging than the other. Two seconds left. And take a break. All right, grab a little sip of water if you need to. I'm going to sneak off hand to do mine. So basically, the next thing we're going to do is some power exercises. Now, the purpose of power in the golf swing is a golf swing is a very powerful ballistic movement. So it doesn't necessarily need to look like a golf swing, but we're working on the power components of a golf swing. For example, in a golf swing, there's a downward power movement, an upward power movement, a lateral power movement, and a rotational power movement. Right? All of those are involved at one way or the other in a swing. So for the purpose of today with minimal to no weight, we're going to work on lateral bound, or what's also what used to be called a skater plyo. And the benefit of that is actually working on not only that explosive movement from one side, but the ability to decelerate and control that movement on the other side. All right, so we're going to do three rounds of lateral bound, or skater plows, and I'm also going to do basically like a vertical component. So now this can either be a vertical jump, or it can be a broad jump of some sort. All right, and if you have a small room, hop back and forth. Otherwise, if you have a long room, I might take three or four hops down, three or four hops back. All right, so now, since we're in this together, all right, we'll go for time instead of reps. We'll do about 20 seconds each. Now, this is not how many can you get in in 20 seconds. It's explosive movement, stick the landing. Explosive movement, stick the landing. All right, 20 seconds. Ready, set, lateral bounce first. Go, pop, stick the landing. Now, again, if you have that implement that we talked about, all right, I may use that as a gauge, because if I come down and touch, I'm going to get more glute on the upside of that bound. All right? If I'm more upright, it gets a little bit more quads. Got five more seconds here. Three, two, one. Take a break. <coughs> now we'll go into a broad jump or a vertical jump. So for the first set, we'll just do vertical jumps. All right? Again, it's not how many can I do in 20 seconds. It's controlled, counter movement, explode, land, reset. Counter movement, explode, land, reset. 20 seconds, ready, set, go. Each one, I'm trying to get as high as I can. If you have uncomfortable knees, just work on a speed squat up to the balls of your feet. Pop. Pop. All right? You're not actually leaving the ground. A few more. And take a break. All right, a little breather. You'll start to see the heart rate creeping up a little bit. You may not see the screen, but I'm getting to about 80%. Breather if you need to. If you're not used to this, if your heart rate's already up too high, Take an extra break, take this middle round off. All right, second set. Lateral bounds again, all right? Load that outside, explode over. Ready, set, go, 20 seconds. Now, if you notice, I'm intentionally not letting my back leg touch. Some people cross over and touch. All right, without letting my back leg touch, I'm forcing my hip to not only do more movement, pop, but also more stabilization. Explode, control, explode. Control. Five more seconds. Spine is still straight. And take a break. Okay, so for a minute, next set, I'll well, just do a broad jump. All right, give yourself a little bit of rest. All right, 10, 15 seconds. If you need more rest, take it. 
right? Otherwise, keep the heart rate up a little bit. I don't want my form to fail. So I would rather take the extra rest and do these properly than just start jumping until I can't jump anymore. All right, so if you need a rest, take it. We'll start in 20 seconds. Set, go. Again, doing broad jump this time. Load. With some of my juniors, I actually like adding the broad jump with a little 180 jump. Broad jump, 180 jump, might as well. I'm gonna turn around anyway. Last couple. And take a break. All right, so like I said, grab water anytime you need to, grab a break anytime you need to. We'll do one more set here. Lateral bounds and broad jumps, and then we're gonna go into strength. So we're at about the 20 minute mark of the workout. So we're gonna be able to do about 10 minutes worth of strength. So we need a warm up, about five minutes. Core, about seven minutes. Power, about five minutes. 10 minutes maybe, depending on how many you wanna do. We're also doing a little explaining, so most likely this is gonna run a little bit longer than 30 minutes. We get strength after this. All right, last of the lateral bounds. Ready, go. Lose your balance. Chest is up, spine is straight. Let me turn so you can see me. Chest is up, spine is straight. I'm not doing this, not slumping. Chest up, spine straight. And take a break. All right, since I showed you that little jump, hop, I'll show you the full circuit that I like to do with my juniors. Great for adults too. All right, so basically it's going to be vertical jump, broad jump. Rotational jump. Now keep in mind, if I land here and I rotate to the left, right, when I come across, next one's going to be a rotate to the right. Always balance. Let's go 30 seconds for this one since we got three jumps, the triple jump. Ready, set, go. Broad jump. Up, out, rotate. challenging the body, when I do lower body movements, I tend to do single sided. All right, so if I'm doing a basic squat and this isn't enough weight, all right, I'm going to do a lunge instead. All right, for example, if I can't do a heavy deadlift, all right, today we're going to be doing, this is going to be our first set, a single leg deadlift. All right, so here's going to be our first set of exercises. All right. Lower body single leg deadlifts, which I'll explain. A basic cut and dry push ups. And since it's really hard to do lat pull down exercises, we're going to be on your back and I'm going to show you how to do a lat pull over. So you get a little extra triceps or lats. All right, so here's what you're going to do. Now, again, you could use any weight kettlebell, dumbbell, book bag, briefcase, golf club. I did another workout with just a golf club. Great option. All right, so there's different ways of doing a single leg deadlift, so we're going to go opposite arm to the opposite working leg. In other words, if my left leg is on the ground, weight is in my right hand. If you have balance issues, right, hinge forward, come back up, and come to a stop, both feet on the ground. Otherwise, everyone else, posture, heel goes straight back, spine straight, and I'm going to come right up, hold that balance position. All right, so we're, normally I would say 15 reps with a moderate to light weight. Since it's through video, we'll go for 30 seconds. All right, left leg down, weight in the right hand. Ready, and go. 
30 seconds. So we're going to be doing three rounds of this strength exercise. Nice and tall. So we've got 15 on each leg. We're about 30 seconds on each leg. Looking at a watch is a little bit challenging for balance. As you can see, my heart rate's up, talking and working out at the same time. For some of you guys, this may be walking the park. For others, you guys may be breathing hard. Take little breaks if you need to. Three, two, one. All right. So since the left leg is working, we're going to go straight into the right leg. Left leg can rest. Right leg is working. Straight spine. All angles. You can see me a little bit differently. Set. Go. I'm working on level hips, level shoulders. If my both my hands were going down. My knuckles should be even. I shouldn't be reaching with one side or twisting on the upper body. And again, you may find that one side is a little harder than the other. Ten more seconds. Not gonna lie, my timing might be off. Never trust a trainer's timer. Oop. Or is balance. Two, one, take a break. Okay, basic push ups. All right. Now, again, I can make these more challenging. Maybe we'll do that in the second round. But for the first round, I want just basic push ups. So, now again, you can either do 15 reps or 30 seconds. All right, my push ups, all right, if you're looking straight down at me, my hands are not up here, my shoulders aren't up towards my shoulders. My shoulders are down, my elbows are down, my hands are slightly up. I'm much stronger and I have a safer shoulder position down here than I do up here. All right, so I'm gonna be down like a plank, hands under the elbows, elbows below the shoulders, toes up, abs tight. We'll go for 30 seconds or 15 reps, your choice. Ready, go. Now keep in mind, a push-up is a moving plank. You shouldn't see any sagging hips or arching backs. Control down, control up. If you want the purpose of strength, slow down. Abs tight, control it down, pop up, control it down, pop up. 10 seconds left. I like the slow eccentrics, pop up, explosion, control down, pop up, two, one, take a break. All right, let's have you go on your side, on your back. So now, the lap pullover, again, I could hold a, a ball, a bag, Kettlebell, or I'm going to stick with my dumbbell. Knees are bent. Core is tight. So when I extend the arms back, again, it's not a tricep, which means I'm not bending at the elbow. Right? And when I extend back, I shouldn't be lifting or arching my back. Abs are tight. Make it a core exercise. Shoulders down. 30 seconds. We're going to extend all the way down. As long as the shoulders are comfortable, tap the, ground, the weight to the ground. All the way up to just above the chest and the belly. You're not going all the way down to your hips. 30 seconds, ready, go. All the way down, abs are tight, lats are tight, arms are straight, shoulders are locked, down away from the ears. Shoulders are ear poison, don't let the shoulders get close to your ears, I shouldn't see any hiking. Go halfway, now about 10 seconds left. Again, I'm controlling my movements. I'm not getting as many as I can in 30 seconds. I'm controlling the downward movement. So I'll feel that more in the lats, the core, the arms. And if your weight isn't heavy enough, slow the movement down even more. All right, go ahead and take a break. And when you're ready, we'll come back up. Grab a sip of water if you need to. We'll get a second round, single leg deadlifts. Push-ups, I'll give you variations this time in a lap tricep pullover. All right, so when you're ready, ideally, if you had a weaker leg, start with a weaker leg. Otherwise, I started with the left last time, so I'm gonna stick with my left this time. Straight spine, second round. Grab water if you need to, otherwise. Ready, set, go. Level hips, level shoulders. Level hips, level shoulders. Tall as you can, shoulders back. Eyes up, chest up. I shouldn't be looking down at your toes. I promise they're gonna be there at the end of the workout. Great for hip stability, great for glute strength, especially if you don't have the heavy lifts available. 10 seconds left, tall as you can. 
Flat back. The last one. Take a break. Shake that leg out. You should feel that hip. If you accidentally did same side, same leg, not a big deal. If you have two weights, you can do both arms. Otherwise, I like the opposing arm as the working leg because it gets more glute medius, more lateral glute. All right, so we'll go opposite side, right leg down, weight in the left arm, straight spine. 30 seconds, go. Up back, try to balance. Halfway. Slow shoulders. Five seconds left. Two, one. Take a break. <laughs> All right. For this next pur uh, purpose of push-ups, I'm going to show you a little variation using that implement. Now, again, I'm going to do this if you don't have a sturdy implement. All right. You may not want to do this. I don't want you to roll out, hurt your wrist. All right. So this is stable. I can use a ball as long as it's stable. Kettlebell laid on its side. But what I'm going to do is we're going to alternate. All right. So, I'm going to do a push-up, walk over, and a push-up. You don't need to do this. If you're not comfortable, stick with push-ups. If push-ups are uncomfortable, just hold the plank. All right? Ready? 30 seconds. Go. Push-up. Walk over. Push-up. Walk over. Push-up. I could walk on to the weight. All right? But I don't trust my weight in the mat here. So, I'm going to go push-up, off the weight, on the weight. Push up, off the weight, on the weight. Push up, about five seconds left. Push up if it's uncomfortable. Finish out with push ups. And take a break. Back on the back, pullovers. Now, again, if I wanted to do this, if this is still too light, I can actually do a one handed version of this. All right, and then you'd have to obviously have to double up on both sides. Otherwise, if you have heavier, you're welcome to grab heavier. But don't let your hips or low back come up off the ground. 30 seconds. Ready? Go. Shoulders down. Abs are tight. I thought I felt my low back come up off the ground there for a second, so I'm going to pull my abdominals in. Think about two inches skinnier, two inches taller at all times. I shouldn't see my belly pooching out. Control it down. You'll be surprised. Feeling this on the triceps and lats tomorrow. Coming up to about chest or stomach, no lower. Three, two, one. Take a break. And then when you're ready, last round. Single leg deadlifts. Push up variation of your choice and lat pullover. I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm going to jump right into this last set. Just to kind of show you that you can do this with other things. All right? Say I want to do a kettlebell, kettlebell, and this aspect works the same as a dumbbell. All right, if you don't have something with a handle, all right, I'm just going to hold it with both hands. Left leg down. Heavier the weight, the more challenging. I still want shoulders back. Ready to go. 30 seconds. Pick the implement of your choice. Straight spine. Shoulders back. I'm gently squeezing in on the ball to make it a little bit more core exercise. Check the time there. 20 seconds left. Again, if it's too light, there's a lot of variations that you can do with this little extra added movement, depending on the weight you have at home. Obviously, more movements makes more challenging balance. As you just saw when I lost my balance. 10 seconds left. Two, one, take a break, shake it up. Switch sides, All right, shoulders back, ready to go. 30 seconds. I'll actually pay attention to the time this time. Worst case scenario, if you get a couple extra reps in, I'm not too worried about that. Let's do a few more for good measure. 
two, one, and take a break. So again, this is a jam ball that doesn't bounce. So if you have one of those and you throw it to the ground, make sure it doesn't bounce. A lot of great exercises you can do with that as well, but I'm gonna add that little challenge of a push-up to me. So again, if I need to, I'm just gonna hold the plank position. 30 seconds, so what I'm gonna do in this one is I'm basically going to use that stable hold, walk over just like I did the weight. 30 seconds, ready? Set, go. Offset, since it's a ball, actually I can roll it over. Press, roll, press, a lot of options. Press, as long as my body might move over, but once I move over, it's a solid push-up. Ten seconds left. If your object doesn't move, you may have to move over the object. Two, one, take a break. All right, last thing. Again, I'm just going to stick with this just to show you there are other options. My heart rate's up quite a bit. We're about 35 minutes into the workout, and I'm just hitting the 500 calorie mark. Again, that's going to differ for everybody. All right, so now same thing. I don't have the handle, so I'm just going to hold this. All right, shoulders down. I'm going to tap and come back up. 30 seconds. Ready to go. Down. Back up. Down. Come back up. Again, abs are tight. Making sure my lower back is glued to the ground. As I roll over, I shouldn't feel any arching in the mid to low back. Two, one, take a break. All right, so that's strength round one. If that was a good enough workout for you, you're welcome to fast forward to the stretches. However, I want to give you a little bit of extra, got a little time, or if you don't think a half hour workout was good enough, I want to give you one more strength set. All right, so let's go back to that single implement of your choice. Why not, let's hook on the ball, all right? So if you have a ball, a weight, a jar, a 10 pound can of paint, whatever you want, you're just holding it upright. If I have a weight, holding it. If I have a kettlebell, holding it or holding it. All right, and we're gonna go into lunges, all right? Shoulders back, I'm holding onto the ball, spine is straight, eyes are up. And when I go for a lunge, I'm gonna step back. If you notice at the bottom of the lunge, 90 degrees of the ankle, the knee, the hips, the knee, the ankle, and we're gonna come back up. All right? Now, if you have two weights, you may want to do all your weight on one side, all your weight on the other. Otherwise, I'm gonna alternate. Same thing, we'll go for 30 seconds. So as you can, ready, go. One back, one back, tall as you can. I just wanna get one more round of just different exercises, and by all means, you can add three rounds of these as well. All right, so the first lower body round was glutes. So now this lower body round is more Quads. Since we're doing both legs, maybe we'll do a couple extra seconds. You could very easily do three rounds of this. Otherwise, you may just want to do this last round as tall as you can. Straight spine. If you're getting tired, I don't want to see bad posture. I want to see tall as you can. Last few. Set and break. Okay, so now for the pulling. At this point, we probably do need something with an A handle. Otherwise, you could do the same thing with a ball. I'm going to have you do a golf posture, bent over row. All right. Otherwise, for the purpose of one arm, straight spine. So I could do golf posture, rows, not rotating, or I could offset my stance. I could widen my stance. All right. So we're just going to stay with golf posture, spine straight, butt back, weights at my side. And we're going to do 30 seconds on each side. Chest up, go. 30 seconds. The only thing that's moving is my shoulder girdle and my arm. I shouldn't be standing, I shouldn't be lifting my shoulder, and I shouldn't be rotating. Squeezing that lat, pulling behind you. If you find yourself having to use your body, weight's too heavy. Even if it's too light, when you get that extra squeeze under here, Works well. Three, two, one. Take a break, stand up, switch arms, all right? 
hinges the hips back to golf posture. I'll turn so you can see me face on this time. Arms at my side, I'm not holding the weight out. Shoulders back and pull. Eyes up, chest up. Ideally, you don't need to be up at the ceiling, but if my ball was in front of me, I'm looking down, which means even my cervical spine, my neck muff, neck spine, cervical spine is in a straight position. 10 more. Seconds, not reps. Shoulders down. I shouldn't feel this in my neck. My arm is coming to straight down and relaxed every time. And take a break. All right, since so that's pulling exercise, last thing, we're going to do a shoulder press. All right, so now, first set, we did lower body and upper body push and an upper body pull. All right, lower body was a single leg deadlift. Push was a push up. Pull was a pull over, lats. So our second round, we did the same thing. Lower body, this time it was a quad exercise. Our pull was a single arm row. So now our press is gonna be a shoulder press. If you have bad shoulders, skip this one or do no weight or do a front raise with a much lighter weight, all right? With a half kneeling press, I like if my right leg is down, my right arm is pressing. Same thing, you could do this with a kettlebell. Straight up, straight down, we'll go for three seconds. Ready, go. Eyes straight, same thing. Level hips, level shoulders. I shouldn't see anything weevil wobbling. Glutes are tight to hold my hips in position. My hands facing in at the bottom, forward at the top. And again, we're just gonna do one round through this. Welcome to do three. When you guys do these videos, take a pic, tag us, share them, post them, let us know what you think, or let us know if you want anything new or anything more. This has been uh, a great opportunity for me to get my own workouts in. Go ahead and switch sides. 30 seconds on the last side, and then we're gonna hit with some stretching. All right, left leg down, left arm pressing. If you accidentally switch it up, it's not that big a deal. It's just less unstable if the other leg is up. Stable hip, 30 seconds, go. Straight up, control back. Spine is straight, eyes are straight. I'm not looking down, I'm not twisting. Last 15 seconds, shoulder down, lap tight, press, glutes tight, holding you in place. Right, if I get tired and I start reaching, I may just stop early. Three seconds left, two, one, and take a break. All right, guys, that was a full body workout. We got warm up, we got core, we got power, we got quads, we got glutes, we got chest, back, shoulders, lats, obliques. That was a full body workout. It took us about 40 minutes. I do want to take a little extra time to go through some stretching. All right, probably the most important stretch is hip rotation and hip flexors. So in order to do hip rotation stretch, all my golfers need this. If you have bad knees, we may want to skip this. I'll show you a variation in a second, all right? Like a pigeon pose in yoga. I'm gonna take both feet, I'm gonna swing them to the right, and I'm gonna take my right leg and drop it over the back. And as I slide down, I'll start to feel a stretch in that left hip, left glute, all right? If that's uncomfortable, or if you have really poor hip range of motion, all right, you can do this on your back, all right? And you're basically just gonna cross one leg up over the other and press. My right hip is very restricted, so I tend to do this one. Otherwise, a little reminder, swing me to the right, Right leg back, slide back. With all these stretches, I like to do a warm up prior to the rounds and prior to workouts. I do still like a little bit of static stretching for those who do need to increase range of motion after rounds and after warm ups. I should feel that right through there. You might feel it on the inside if you're tight. You may even feel a little bit hamstring if you're tight. Go ahead and switch sides if you haven't. All right, so now same thing, I'll start from scratch. All four position, swing the feet to the left. Drop the left leg over the right, so my entire spine down to my leg is in a straight line, right? My knee is outside my body, my foot is outside my body. I'll come this way so you can see this. My knee is outside my body, my foot is outside my body. I don't want you laying on your leg. It should be rotated underneath you. And again, if that's uncomfortable, quick little reminder, on your back, cross the leg and press. If that's not hard enough, you can grab hold that other leg. Head relaxed, stretch of the glute. All right, and then the last stretch before I let you guys go. Hip flexor stretch. So from that all four position, come up into one leg up. All right, 
I don't want your typical yoga hip flexor stretch. I'm not arching my back, I'm not leaning forward. From this position, I want you to do basically what's called a pelvic tilt. If you had a belt buckle on, you're pulling it up into your belly button. So my pelvis is shifting underneath me. I'll feel a stretch here. This is called a half kneeling hip flexor stretch. Great for people who sit all day. I make almost all my golfers do this on a regular basis, whether they're working out or not. If they're traveling a lot, go at a desk a lot. Same thing, 30 to 60 seconds. And for the purpose of time, we'll go ahead and switch. All right, I'll turn this way so you can see me. One leg up, one leg down. Just so you know, I get about uh, 650 calories in in this about 45 minutes. Scoop the hips. Again, that may differ for different people. Could be in better shape, could be in worse shape. I'm probably middle ground at this point. All right, scoop those hips, feel that right in the top of the hip, right about where your front pocket would be. Give me the last 15 seconds, exaggerate that. If it's still easy, feel free to reach up and away. And go ahead and take a break. Guys and gals, golfers and non-golfers, thank you guys very much. I appreciate you guys hanging tight with me. Let us know if you have any questions. Try this workout. Let me know what you think. Post about it. Uh, let's see a selfie or something. And then tag us. Let us know how we do. Otherwise, we'll see you guys very soon. Hit them far and straight.